tonight we're focusing on the uh, situation to do with the Social Health Insurance Fund and getting to dissect some of the numbers, but also crucial information that you need to know. First of all, I'm sure by now you know that the salaried Kenyans or salaried households or households that depend on salaries and wages, they'll be paying 2.75% of the gross uh, salary or wage, but that has to be at least 300 shillings, which will be the mi minimum. Now, something is changing because currently under the NHIF, the minimum contribution is 500 shillings. It is dropping to 300 shillings. Now, there's no defined limit. Initially, there was conversation that that figure would be capped at a certain figure. Now, the regulations are saying are not showing any capping, uh, but the Cabinet Secretary for Matters Health is saying that that will be subjected to conversation during the public participation. So now, these contributions must be made by the ninth day of each month. Now, the regulations do not say whether it is by the ninth month uh, by the ninth day of each month uh, succeeding the month of payment, meaning if you're paid in December, the contribution must be made on the 9th of January. It doesn't say that. It just talks about ninth day of each month. Maybe that will be clarified later. For persons that um, do not have a salary, these are households that, uh, uh, yes, they uh, live a life, but not from a salary. Probably it is informal sector. Others are unemployed. Uh, some have no means, especially that can be determined in terms of uh, how they run their lives. Now, the annual contributions will be based on 2.75% of the proportion of household income. So you don't have a salary, yes, but you surely make some income, and that will be determined based on a means testing instrument that the ministry says that uh, will be worked on. Again, the minimum contribution must be 300 shillings, and again, there is no defined limit. Now, what that means is that uh, the Social Health Authority, which is already in existence, there are some appointments that were made last year, and we'll be talking about them. The Social Health Authority will be collecting data for proxy means testing. So the data that uh, they will be looking at is, first of all, the housing characteristics. What sort of a house do you live in? in. Um, what is the floor area? How many bedrooms? How many rooms that are usable for that family? Access to basic services is also a factor that they'll be looking at. Household composition and characteristics, of course, uh, probably talking about the membership in that family and how they can be defined in terms of the characteristics. Of course, the regulations do not go beyond that in defining what that is. Any other socioeconomic aspects? Now, this is a very broad statement. Any other socioeconomic um, aspects that may be determined by the authority, there's so much that goes in there that we do not know yet. Now, the instrument is being developed by the Minister of Health and the Ministry in Charge of Social Protection Affairs in government. Again, the means testing instrument will also be looking at indigent, uh, indigent, indigent households. Uh, these are persons that cannot manage to pay, so the means testing will be determining who are this. The government will be paying for them, whether it's at the national level or the county level, and then the amount will be a base a premium. Again, not defined, and we'll be looking at what that means. Then the Minister of Health and the Social Protection uh, Department, as well as uh, county governments, are the ones that will be identifying these families that have to benefit. Again, let's look at uh, something else in, as far as the transitions are concerned. So once you become a member or a contributor to the Social Health Insurance Fund, you will enlist your spouse and the children that are depending on this uh, contributor. So persons that reach 18 years, after reaching the age of majority, uh, those children now adults are expected to register as separate household, not this. Once you turn 18, you're supposed to register as a separate household and make your contribution at a minimum of 300 shillings, of course, also depending on the amount of income that you're making or not. For persons that reach the age of 25 plus, they have no income, they're living with a contributor, still, you have to register as a separate household and you have to make a contribution of 300 shillings minimum. That's what the law is saying. It doesn't matter whether you're married or you're not, whether you're single or whatever circumstance that you're in. Now, um, this is the impact of the contributions on some sample um, salary um, categories. A person currently earning 15,000 shillings per month, you pay NHF contribution of 600 shillings. With a new rate of 2.75%, that drops to 412 shillings 50 cents. For someone making 20,000 shillings a month, currently you pay 750 shillings to the NHIF. You will soon be paying 550 shillings, another decline of about 200 shillings. For a person paying, who receives 50,000 gross pay in a month, you currently pay 1,200 shillings to the NHIF. You will 
will soon pay 1,375 for 200,000. Of course, the upper cut of uh, payments, you currently pay 1,700, which is the maximum contribution to the NHIF. You will soon pay 5,500 shillings um, per month. For persons earning half a million shillings, you currently pay the minimum of 1,700. You will soon pay 13,750. You can see the level of increment for a person earning a million shillings. You currently pay again 1,700 shillings. You will soon pay 27,500 shillings. And of course, the minister says that uh, there is no cap as yet, but if the public participation brings on board a conversation about introducing that cap, then it can be considered. So currently, the next steps include the public participation that is ongoing. Of course, the ministry has released the regulations, invited Kenyans to make their submissions. As soon as that process is done, then work will be done on the regulations, and then the ministry will submit the regulations to parliament. Parliament will subject this to the Committee on Delegated Legislation that is going to consider these regulations. If satisfied, then um, endorses them, and of course, causes parliament to endorse them. But if there are certain issues, they may be taken back to the ministry uh, for review. And of course, as soon as they are accepted, there is a possibility that they'll have to gain concurrence by the Senate, bearing in mind that they also affect matters in the counties. Now, beyond um, the regulations coming to effect, the regulations also speak about 90 days of registration. So once they become effective, meaning they have been gazetted or published in the Kenya Gazette, then 90 days, within the 90 days, all Kenyans must apply to be registered to the Social Health Authority, after which contributions uh, can begin to be taken. Now, already there are some members that were appointed uh, last year to the Social Health Authority, chaired by Dr. Timothy Olweni, who is the chairperson. There's Dr. Zakayo Karioki Gishuki, representing the caucus of CECs of Health in the counties. There's Jacinta Kathamu Motegi, um, uh, representing the consortium of health providers. And of course, Francis Atoli, representing the uh, court to as the workers considered. But there are more that are supposed to be sitting in that authority in the board. Patrick Amot, the Director General of Health, the PSAs of Health and the National Treasury, the Council of Governors Representative, the Kenya Medical Association, Informal Sector Association reps, and the health, uh, health financing expert is supposed to be appointed. And that uh, board is a membership of 11. Quorum is five, which already they may have, and therefore they can make a few decisions already. Uh, they are required to be recruiting the CEO, who of course will be leading the side of management in terms of uh, the daily operations of the authority. So these are critical milestones that you need to know about, that uh, full composition of the board is pending. There is recruitment of CEO that is supposed to happen, and after that, the management at the top level. But beyond that, there has to be staff working for the Social Health Authority. You may know by now that currently the officers that work for the National Health Insurance Fund, once this takes effect, they will not have a job until they apply and are recruited by the Social Health Authority, meaning they will be prioritized in the recruitment of the members of staff for uh, Social Health Authority, but it's not a guarantee that they will be given an opportunity. Those that do not qualify, they will, may apply to retire early, or they can be deployed to other institutions of government. And then finally, there is the transition from the National Health Insurance Fund to the Social Health Authority, which by Gazette notice must be by November 21st of 2024, bearing in mind that the law allows a one-year transition period. And that is what you need to know about the Social Health Authority and the Social Health Insurance Fund. And obviously, we'll have the Cabinet Secretary later on on NewsGang to elaborate more on the questions, including some of those, what happens when you turn 18, what happens when you turn 25, and so much more in the regulations. That's Data Point for this week.